ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics are a fascination to many people. The history of Egyptian hieroglyphics dates back as far as 3000 BC, but it wasn't until the early 1800s that the mysteries of these ancient symbols were revealed. Before then, the rich history and knowledge of ancient Egypt had been hidden for centuries. In the 6th century BC, Egypt was invaded by the Persians and then later by the Greeks and Romans. What these invading armies discovered were great pyramids, tombs, and temples built to honor the gods and kings of the Egyptian people. And inside these temples, they discovered carved and painted images on nearly every wall and surface, all written in Egyptian hieroglyphics. Scholars believe that Egyptian hieroglyphics came into existence a short while after Sumerian cuneiform and was probably influenced by the Sumerian concept of expressing words in writing. These hieroglyphics were a formal writing system used by ancient Egyptians that contained a combination of logographic and alphabetic elements. Logograms are visual symbols representing ideas or objects. They were generally stylized and simplified, but perfectly recognizable nonetheless. Alphabetic or phonetic variations came later as the language evolved into demotic, used for document writing. The word hieroglyphic is derived from two Greek words, hiero meaning sacred, and glyphic meaning engraving or writing. Ancient Egyptians believed it was important to record and communicate information about religion and government. Students went to scribe schools to learn how to read and write. Military leaders were trained as scribes so they could communicate with each other while in battle against an enemy. Temples were the houses of the gods and goddesses, and the walls were decorated with pictures and writings showing respect for them. The priests who worked in the temples were scribes who could read and write the instructions on temple walls and papyrus scrolls for rituals which were performed to please the gods and goddesses. Papyrus is a substrate made from reeds native to Egypt. Wet reeds are placed crisscross over each other, flattened and dried. Then they are rubbed with flat stones until the surface becomes smooth. Scribes were also responsible for writing a set of scrolls written for pharaohs and other important Egyptians on papyrus, containing instructions and spells to help them find their way to the afterlife. These books of the dead were usually commissioned by the users themselves before their death. It is believed that Egyptian hieroglyphics continued to be used under Persian rule, but by the time the Greeks and Romans ruled Egypt, few Egyptians were capable of reading or writing them. The last known hieroglyphic inscription was written in 396 AD, just after all non-Christian temples were ordered closed by the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. Over time, those who could read and write Egyptian hieroglyphics disappeared, until there was no one left who knew how to decipher the ancient language. Then, in 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of France, decided to undermine England's access to its trade routes and chose to invade Egypt and establish a French presence in the Middle East. While building a fort in Rosetta, just a few miles east of the Egyptian city Rashid, French soldiers spotted a slab with inscriptions on it. Believing it to be a find of some significance, they had it transported to Cairo to be examined by the many scholars that accompanied Napoleon during his invasion of Egypt. The scholars believed that this Rosetta Stone had the same inscription written on it in three different languages, Egyptian hieroglyphics, Demotic, and Greek. But they could still not decipher the hieroglyphics, partly because a chunk of the stone was missing and none of the three texts were absolutely complete. So, they made rubbings of the text and sent them to other scholars in France, seeking their help with this puzzle. Eighteen months after Napoleon had invaded Egypt, the British also invaded Egypt 
and defeated Napoleon's army, and took back to England with them many Egyptian discoveries, including the Rosetta Stone. It now resides in the British Museum, where it has been since 1802. In 2003, Egypt requested that the Rosetta Stone be returned to Egypt. In response, the British Museum presented to Egypt a full-size replica of the artifact. In 1822, one of the Rosetta Stone rubbings came into the hands of a young French scholar named Jean-Francois Champagnon, a master of linguistics who had, at age 16, mastered a dozen languages. He had eagerly followed Napoleon's exploits in Egypt and had spent several years trying to decipher the hieroglyphics on the Rosetta Stone. Champagnon's breakthrough came when he was able to match up the hieroglyphic symbols for the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses with the Greek version of the name. Once he was able to decipher the rest of the text, he discovered that the inscription on the stone referred to King Ptolemy V Epiphanes at the time of his coronation at age 5, somewhere around 196 BC. Because of the discovery of the Rosetta Stone by the French army, and the work done by Jean-Francois Champagnon, we now know a great deal about the ancient Egyptians and Egyptian hieroglyphics. <laughs>